Hello, everybody. Welcome to another exciting edition of Change the F Up, the only show where the format is never the change because, let's face it, change is good. I am indeed your host, Nate the Effing Great, joined by my lovely co-host, the one and only Victory Bell. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. I'm excited to celebrate. (laughs) We are going to be celebrating indeed because we got a lot to talk about in this show, but of course I got to get the sponsors out. Of course, available on Spreaker.com, iTunes, Player.fm, PodDirectory.com, Stitcher.com, TuneIn Radio, IW Nerd, Satchel Podcast Player, as well as Mr. NTG 1990 on YouTube. And, of course, you got to give a shout-out to ProWrestlingCrate.com. And, actually, guys, very soon, I'm actually going to start getting my membership into that, so that way you can see the kind of great goodies that you can get in these crates. It's going to be a one-of-a-kind deal that you can't get anywhere else. Check it out very soon. As well as AJsBelts.com, which, you guys, if you're not listening to this, you really need to be. you only got a few more days until you can take advantage of this deal. Go contact them, AJsBelts.com at yahoo.com mention to them that the squared circle podcast has referred to you and you will get an exclusive deal on the universal and the cruiserweight championship belt now from what i'm told the cruiserweight belt is still available but it might also be on backstock same thing could be said about the universal titles so hopefully you guys can still get a good deal on that so check out that all right i need to take a breath so we are definitely going to be talking about This is actually going to be very interesting because we are about two weeks away from the most wonderful time of the year. Yes, we're talking about Christmas, indeed. And for those of you that don't celebrate Christmas, you know, happy Hanukkah. Or for you atheists, well, uh, get a life and have a nice day. So, (laughs) we're going to be talking a lot about the (laughs) the Christmas movies as well as Christmas songs. But before we get into that... uh, there's a lot that's going to be going on this weekend. You got Rogue One that's going to be coming out, as well as Assassin's Creed next week. But also, earlier this week, actually I think it was last week if I'm not mistaken, uh, Miss Victory Belt sent me a link to the first trailer released for Spider-Man Homecoming coming out in 2017. For, yeah, we, for, we first we got to talk about that, because holy cow, does that look like an amazing, amazing movie because you not only get the cameos of uh, Tony Stark, a.k.a. Robert Downey Jr., a.k.a. Iron Man, a.k.a. one of the best superheroes of all time, but you also get a new, you get a new perspective because apparently they are going completely different. They're not going with Green Goblin. They're not going with Doc Ock. Instead, what they're going with is they're going with apparently Vulture, Mysterio, as well as Shocker, which... I'm very interested in seeing how that goes because Shocker, I think, is one of my favorites next to Venom in the Spider-Man series. Now, i got to ask you this, Tori, that one thing that my co-host Max Beatty brought up in his uh, Spider-Man Homecoming trailer review, which you can check out, of course, as always, on YouTube, Agent Cooper. Shout out to him. Does it feel like they are kind of doing a repeat of what was with Spider-Man 3 where they're putting on too many villains in just one movie, or is there a way that they can actually make that work? See, I think that in Spider-Man 3, it was Spider-Man versus three guys. If you have to, if you think about it now, Spider-Man is just another member of the Avengers in this. And we see Tony Stark throughout the whole trailer. Even at the end, we see him in his Iron Man suit. So I'm guessing that he's going to get some help from, from other people. So, I would say that uh, having three villains with all the Avengers at his second call is not too much. I think that it's going to add to, you know, the, the climax of the tale and of what's going to happen and kind of show that, hey, Spider-Man's going to try to do this alone, but obviously he might need some friends <laughs> to come and help him out in the end. I think it was too much because um, it's Spider-Man 3, or whatever. That, that was the third one? Yeah, that was the third one. Are we talking about the third one that Tony McGuire was in, or are we talking about um, the Starfield one? No, no, the, the Tobey Maguire one was the only third one that came out, remember, because they were originally going to do Spi- okay. Amazing Spider-Man 3, but then... Uh, yeah, Andrew Garfield got sick over the flight over, and apparently Sony took it personally, and they just fired him. So, 
<sighs> Way to go, so, Sony. Okay, you so great job. I was kind of talking about both. I mean, both of them had a, a crap ton of villains. So that it kind of seems like a constant oh, in right. Spider-Man that they like to throw a bunch at him. But I guess he is a pretty powerful superhero. So you want him to be challenged a little bit. And I mean, no offense to the Vulture, but I don't think that's much of a challenge. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's going to be interesting how that plays out, considering that we're more than likely going to see Spider-Man and, of course, the Infinity Wars. That is going to be an awesome movie, and I'm going to be very surprised in how they, you know, I think how many box office records they're going to break probably when that movie comes out, as well as how they're going to divide all of that money just to uh, pay every single actor that's going to be in there. I mean, my God, it's going to be crazy. But get into that more when the time draws near, which I believe will be... Uh, do, have they set a date for Infinity Wars? Do you know off by offhand if they did? I did not know offhand. I kind of feel like they don't have a date date yet. I think they're still filming. Okay, I, I thought they had like a year at least set, but as far as like a date date, like you said, yeah, I don't think they have that set and ready to go. It's definitely not twenty seventeen. No, 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 no. no. I think that's. that's I, I think that they'll probably do it like twenty. Uh, I think they might set it in like 2019, probably when uh, the final Star Wars probably comes out, and uh, that might be another year where it's going to be a, another crazy year for movies. But again, that's still years from now. We're just about to cross the threshold into 2017, and we've talked so much about that. Time to talk about you know present day, present time, and a little bit of the past. And what better way to do that than to talk about some of the great. Christmas movies that have indeed come out, and some that are obviously yet to come. Uh, geez Louise, when you think about Christmas and you think about movies, they definitely go hand in hand together. It's just one of those things where families just join together, and they're laughing, and they're having a good time, and they're just having that special bond where it's just like, you know, peace on earth, good world towards men. I haven't really heard any major catastrophes that happened on Christmas, so I think everybody was just like, you know what, this is our day off. Let's just Let's just chill out at home, you know, whatever. We're we're totally fine with that. So, uh, but getting into the movies, um, Tori, what has been one movie that you've enjoyed uh, during the Christmas time? Um, you know what I have to say, and I'll start with this one because you disagree with me, but I'm going to start with Elf. I love, I love Will Ferrell's Elf. I think it's awesome that they kind of threw in the claymation versions that everybody loves with, at the beginning of this, showing his journey with the claymation little, like, penguins and polar bears and all this stuff. And I, I just like the whole journey. I think it's a fun take on a Christmas tale of he's trying to find his father and his father's kind of naughty. And, yeah, and Santa stole him on accident. So I think it's great. I think it's hilarious. And we got a lot of, I mean, I... I I know you were going to disagree with this, but I think it's turning into a Christmas classic. Everybody brings out elves. People quote elves. People talk about spaghetti and syrup and sugar. And I just think it's, it's hilarious. It was very kid-friendly and just, I don't know, it opened our hearts. <laughs> Well, I'm definitely not going to deny the success that Elf has had. I mean, by God, they've made it into an actual uh, play performance, and it's actually going to be coming up pretty soon. I think it's actually either happening this weekend or next... No, it's not happening next weekend. I think that'd be crazy. I think it might be happening this weekend or it happened last weekend. There was a theater group that uh, put on Elf for a uh, musical, and I'm not, again, I'm not denying the success that Elf has probably had. It's just, again, one of those movies where I think this is where Will Ferrell goes over the top, and not in the kind of Jim Carrey way where it's still kind of funny. I think it just kind of gets in the way of just getting to be, like, a little bit annoying, I guess. And I noticed that a lot about some of his movies where he just goes over the top and people think, like, it's funny, but I just kind of sit there like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of over this 
deal. But again, not dissing anybody else in the in the movie. Like I like I said before, uh, Zoe De- Dejanel, great singer, great actress. I think that she's awesome. She does a pretty good job in that movie. I just think the pairing of her and Will Ferrell is just a little bit, you know, a little bit wonky. But again, that's just my opinion. Bring on the hate. Bring on the hate. I know there's a lot of people that are going to be like, oh, how dare you hate Alf? You're not Christmas Bay. Blah, 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 blah. It's like, just, just bring it on. Uh, I can handle it at this point. So, while you're going with Alf, I'm actually going to go with a bit of a uh, very classical movie and one that really tugs at the heartstrings, and that, of course, being a Charlie Brown Christmas. I mean, I know, shocker, a Peanuts movie made it on the Christmas uh, list. It has, because it, it's one of those really good movies where, again, it brings families together and it helps you kind of appreciate the value of friendship and the value of just realizing what Christmas is really all about. It's not always about, you know, getting. It's all about the the miracle of, of course, you know, Jesus being born on this day, but also just talking a lot about... Um, just of course it's always about giving it's about being there for others it's giving your time giving you know possessions giving being generous to others that's really what christmas is all about um and of course without the peanuts uh we wouldn't have that iconic uh christmas tree that charlie brown brought everybody knows what i'm talking about that one that has like the two planks at the bottom and it just looks like a shriveled up stick i mean come on that's just that's just an iconic deal that you cannot deny. It's a it's a beautiful tree in its own right, and some people look at it like, eh, well, I guess you can't afford everything. It's like true, but you know what? It's still Christmas, so shut up. <laughs> it honestly is one of those movies I really enjoy. But I don't know how how do you feel about the uh, uh, peanut uh, Charlie Brown Christmas? Around the holidays, just was the norm. I mean, he's around Thanksgiving, Halloween, everything. They do a special for everything, and it's been around for so long that you gotta love it. Oh gosh, yes. All right, so, all right, so why don't you name off another one, Tori? Um, another one of my favorites that you kind of stole from me was Christmas Vacation. Um, I think that one is just such a classic. Jim Carrey's live action of uh, Dutch Susan, How the Grinch Stole Christmas is one of my all-time favorites. I don't know why I love this so much, but I really, really like it. Yeah, well, <laughs> I have to watch it every year. Yeah, we'll also tie in the uh, the classical version as, as well, because honestly, side by side, obviously there's a lot of differences between the two of them, but the same story is across, there's, you know, Christmas. there's a creature who doesn't like Christmas, so he decides, I'm just going to steal Christmas you know, everything, and, yeah, all in all, he learns in the end, it's not about, you know, ribbons, it's not about tags, it's not about packages, boxes, or bags, it's all about, you know, something more, and a lot of people don't necessarily like the live-action one, I disagree, I think that Jim Carrey does a phenomenal job as the Grinch, and he, he, it was one of those characters that a lot of people will agree, it's kind of hard to see anybody else filling that role as well as Jim Carrey did. I mean, as soon as I found out that it was him, I honestly pictured him doing that classic, you know, smile where he's just like from ear to ear. It's just so huge. And (laughs) it just fit him so well. It's just one of those things where Jim Carrey just was born for that role. Oh, my gosh. And how all the who's have their little noses. It's just so fun. And the one thing about, I think, the classic version which as a kid, I, I was okay with, but to me, I don't like to watch it over and over and over again, just because it's basically a rhyme, you know, it's a book, it's based off of a book, and I love the book as well, but it's like, oh, I know exactly what's going to happen, exactly what they're going to say, and they're going to rhyme, and it's going to be a great day, yay Christmas, but um, I love how they kind of added the rhyme and the nursery rhyme, I call it a nursery rhyme, it's not a deduction. Right. But I like how they ended bits and pieces of it with other dialogue and with other conflict of how, like, the Grinch is just, like, as a little kid, the backstory of how he just looks so 
different. No one liked it because it was so different. 